Good afternoon, everyone. This is Steve. Welcome to the Little Little Wood Shop. And today we're going to be discussing our CNC town welcome sign replication as part of our Sunday evening blog, okay? So, without further ado, this is the sign. This is at the southernmost point uh, coming into our, our town uh, of Grove to New Hampshire. This is the community welcoming sign uh, for our our vacationers as, as well as anybody coming through. We have one at the uh, northernmost end and we also have one to the east over by my house off of uh, Route 110, okay? Well this is the sign. We're gonna try to expedite this video along as quickly as we can. We're gonna go through the steps on the VCarve Pro with the build and we're gonna be bouncing in and out of uh, this little film strip here. I also have an exact replicated copy of the program itself marked up with measurements so we can give you a better idea okay all right well this is the sign in the bottom left corner we have uh, a nice focal point this is it we're going to do our best to try to uh, to try to replicate this and what I've opted to do is to do this in a separate program all by itself and then later on import and insert it into the the primary workspace okay now as I told you length and width this is our width we're, we're 47 and 3 quarters obviously we made it at 48 these are just two of the basic basic measurements that need to be taken our width and our height 4836 and I told you we were going to be pushing the limitations of our machine now some of the other images that we've got and this is a this is an inverted radius <clears throat> not an external but an inverted and I should have had a speed square with me I ended up using my camera as reference uh, three and a quarter is the internal radius we'll show you how we put that in the program afterwards or actually I can show you right now here's the program that's marked up and we can see right here there is our 3.25 inch radius based on a 48 by 96 uh, 48 by 36 excuse me we're 48 wide right here and we're 36 tall right here okay let's get back to our little photo slideshow if we can now we take a measurement from the furthest right corner and I tried to keep these all strictly for reference now if I come back to our drawing we can see that over to the center or just a little to the uh, the side of the center of our O we are 12 inches and in the illustration we are 12 inches so Basically, all we're going to do is we're going to transfer everything in our photos and we're going to basically build the job off of our measurements in the photo. Now, the font size here is like 5 and 7 eighths, 5 and 3 quarters. What we ended up going with for the sake of the tutorial is we got 4 and 3 quarters on our height. So we lost half, maybe five-eighths of an inch. Nothing major. Whatever lettering was used in the original production of the sign is not necessarily, we're not going to always be able to match things up 100 percent. So we'll clip through and we can look at we can look at the different, uh, the different heights of all the font. We make, uh, you know, we make notes of all this stuff same thing again there's three different font sizes throughout this uh, this is the very bottom half uh, where it says incorporated just above 1761 this is one and a half I can tell you that I was able to do the build at uh, 1.75 or an inch and three quarters our little scenery piece down here measures 13 and a quarter inches wide I think I was able to hold it at close to 12 but I wasn't able to copy it exactly. However, it's still going to be very visible, and it makes it. It is going to make a very nice, uh, a very nice scenic display in this particular project. 
Now from the bottom up, we notice right here our border is not even an inch and a half, it's like an inch and a quarter. Well, due to fabrication and integrity as far as the overall uh, structure is concerned, as far as the strength of the sign, we ended up going with a two inch border, and we'll get into that more in just a moment. We're five inches over from our side. I'll bounce back into the, uh, to the measurements here and there. From the side here, because I did go with a wider border at two inches, we're three and a quarter inches. Again, we measure off the edge, and we're just trying to keep reference points with the font as to how everything's going to line up. I want to make sure that I'm able to hold as close to what we have here. Now, uh, if we look, we measured from the side over to the W. I was roughly six inches. Well, I'm 6.19. Well, that's that's pretty darn close. So I'm I'm quite happy with that. All right, we're just about over with the pictures, and we'll get to the build. Same thing. Make your measurements. Keep track of them. If you've got a laptop or a, a second computer by all means have that to work from as you're doing your build I happen to have dual monitors so it just it makes it a little bit easier alright last slide now this is this is rather weathered we can see that this was built out of pine uh, on the back of this it was like uh, looked like a per piece of marine grade plywood now there is a covered bridge that is going to be going in. This is the covered bridge right in downtown by my home. Uh, it was built in 1852. Now, we're going to show you the insert that we drew up. There is a typo here. Uh, 1761 was the year of incorporation uh, for the town. We're going to change that so that we have 1852 in there. I want to try to keep everything as close to what it should be. I ended up building this on the side separately. We'll get deeper into that in a minute. Both of these images we got out of openclipart.org. I told you I use all open source. We always give attribution back where attribution can do its most good. This is going to be the back side. This is going to be strictly a two-dimensional engraving. No more, no less. Basically, uh, you're leaving. You'll, you'll see. Thank you for visiting Northumberland. All righty. Let me close out of this because I believe we are uh, we are all done here. Oh, wait a minute, we have one more. This is going to be the finished piece when everything is said and done. This is what our client uh, is most most pleased with. We go back and forth, back and forth. We get designs, we get font, we get everything laid out, and that's the nice thing about working with VCarve Pro or thus far anything I've seen with the Vetric products. I'm allowed to take, and this is the exact rendered JPEG image out of the CAD software itself that allows us to export it as a JPEG file to a client for their review. Okay? Alrighty. Well, let's close this out. Let me pull up a blank copy of Vetric. Alrighty. So what we're going to do is I know right off the top that my workspace, the width of my machine is 50. Now remember, we're also programming this on the horizontal. We're going to have to rotate this 90 degrees and invert it on the y-axis. And I know that my height, my machine maxes out at 39 to 30. My spoiler board is only 37 inches wide, so we're going to literally be hanging this over the edge by like a half an inch. All right. So we're going to set it for 38 point. We're going, to, uh, we're going to click OK. What we're using is an inch and a half KD pine. We're basically using 2 by stock. That's 1.5 inches thick. We click OK. Now the first thing we're going to do is we need to build that 48 by 36 box. We go to create vectors, draw a rectangle. Now right here we can enter in manually what we want. 48 point 36 point. Now in this case we have an internal radius of 3.25 inches. Click apply and then we center this. Now as you can see we literally have one inch around this whole piece. We're gonna have to screw 
because at this point we're also going to be covering up all of our T-slot tracks for our clamps. I can't even clamp this down, so it's going to get interesting to say the least. We're going to cover that and that technique in next weekend's video as part of the milling and fabrication tutorial, okay? All right, now the other thing I want to do is I'm going to create a border. I'm going to basically copy this. We're going to make sure that we are in Edit Object Selection Mode. Highlight it, right-click Copy, right-click Paste. You can see that pink line is, is darkened up because there's an identical copy there. We're going to go into Transform Objects and we're going to resize it. We go 44 by 32. We click Apply. It's already centered. Now we have our two inch border. Now I have the program sitting on the other monitor so I do get to cheat just a little bit which is kinda nice. Alright so we're gonna go into text. Now please bear with me for just one moment because I need to find out what the text was that my client chose. Okay. It is a text called Garamond. We're running off the center and our text height is 4.75 inches in overall height and we're going to put in Groveton. Alright, we're going to click apply. Now, it also needs to be bold, excuse me, there we go, much better. Now, we have an arch here. Edit text spacing and curve. We're going to pull him up and then we're going to move him up. I am going to eyeball him because I don't want to break out all the measurements that I have. Now the other thing we can do is we can notice there is significant spacing between each one of these. All right. You can left click, left click, left click, do everything, oh excuse me, do everything evenly. Don't click four in one place and two in another. Break them all up evenly. And what's going to happen is we're going to actually pull the text in a little bit closer. Okay, great. We'll go down to our Align Selected Objects. Oh my goodness. And we're going to align material to the center. Okay, we have our arching. Groveton is completed. Now, Community Welcomes You is the next thing. We're going to go back to text. Here we have a text height of 2.75. I told you we had uh, we had three different font heights. We're going to click apply. We will close this out now. We'll go back afterwards in a moment, and I'll I'll show you the image with all the markups and the measurements, and as to why we did some of them the way we did them. I'm basically looking at the original right now. Like I said on the other monitor, I have that for reference to try to, to expedite this long, uh, along as quickly as possible. All right. And always when you, you move things around, center them either side to side or top to bottom, either on your, your X or your Y axis. All right. Now, we told you we had an insert. I'm not going to go crazy stupid into how we built that insert, but what we are going to do is we're going to import it. Our center scene is right here. We're going to open him. Again, click on any part of him that's already highlighted. Get your nodes around the box and grab your center one. Now when we built this, and again I am only going to eyeball this in, we'll show you the measurements afterwards and why we physically use the measurements that we used. Alright, we're in place now. We're going to open up the toolpath function just to have that handy. 
Uh, the last part of this is the town of Northumberland incorporated 1761. We're going to go back to our text. All right, we've got our text height set at 1.75. I told you there was, again, there were three different text heights. Town of Northumberland Incorporated. We're going to click Apply. Now, what we're going to do, we can now close this out. We're going to light him up. We're going to grab our center node, and we're going to pull him down. Now, the one thing we need to make sure of, and this is why in the other diagram that is marked up with all the measurements, what we need to do is I need to make sure that I have enough clearance because when we go to cut the tool pass, one of the tool paths that we have uh, for the engraving function is you are able to utilize a flat area clearance tool. You can use a much larger bit. Now in this case, uh, I'm not going to use a quarter inch end mill to go around all this. We're going to hog all this out with a half inch. If I had a collet big enough, I'd probably use three quarter, but for the sake of this job, we are using a half inch uh, two fluted end mill, and we're going to utilize a 60 degree uh, half inch diameter V bit to do the cleanup afterwards. Okay. Now, what we've got to make sure of is our measurements, because as this is going to be a two dimensional engraving, when we go to hog out, I need to make sure that our bit can clearly pass through here. If not, this would have to be all cleaned up with a 60 degree V bit. It's going to add more milling time, which is ultimately going to create more table time. Okay, So we want to make sure that we have enough space between here and here. You can always uh, go over to create vectors and add a dimension and you can just shoot a measurement from here to here and you're 870,000. So you're clearly going to be able to get a 0.500 uh, end mill, a half inch end mill through there, okay? Let me get rid of that. And we basically have done that in the diagram all the way around the entire job. Every bit of it. Because I don't want at any point, I want to be able to take the bulk of the material out, in fact, with that end mill. I don't want to have to use that V-bit. The V-bit is strictly for cleanup, okay? Alrighty. So let me pull up real quick if I may we'll pull up the uh, the measurement chart again or oh, I'm sorry the diagram here the print with the uh, with all the measurements on it what I've done is I've looked between the font I've looked at the spacing there we've looked at the spacing from the outermost uh, top of the sign itself to the, to the top of Groveton to make sure that my space also as well between my font is 1.1 inches. Half inch end mill can go through no problem. Our border is two inches wide. The client's border was originally one or one and a quarter. Reason being for that is when we go to fabricate this, the front and the back is both, e each side is being made out of inch and a half material. Everything here is laid out. Uh, the scene tutorial, like I've shown you, we ended up constructing that in a separate program right here. The outermost circle, uh, the original sign was 13.125, uh, 13 and an eighth inches. We have our overall 12. So we ended up losing about an inch, okay, which is really not the end of the world. Now what we're going to do, I'll close this out, we don't need to keep it open now. The only thing I do need to do is make the revision to the date on the item itself. Now, we showed you how to invert your corners, I've showed you how to take and copy this outermost frame, deduct a total of four inches, two inches top and bottom, two inches for right and left side. So that way there, your innermost frame, uh, dimensionally, is four inches less all the way around, giving you your two inch profile. Okay, now, we're gonna cut the tool pass. Now, what I told you I've done, the first one, it's highlighted pink, 
is the toolpath for a bevel. I really like putting bevels on things. Some of you may end up using uh, half round, quarter round bits. Some of you may put a decorative routered edge around it, okay? I personally like putting uh, a bevel or like a chamfer if I, if I can. The machine does it flawlessly, as we all know. All right, now, what I've put around is 250 thousandths. We don't need to run the tooling functions. The other thing we've done here is because this is going to be a pocket, in order to make it 2.5 dimensions, click the innermost border. And what it's going to do is it's going to tell the, tell the CAD program to mill this and basically leave the lettering but dig out all the material around it. Now, if you clicked off this border, held down the shift key, one, you wouldn't be able to use uh, a half inch end mill. You'd be doing this mainly with a quarter inch end mill and you'd do clean up with a 60 inch V bit, but this would make it a two dimensional. Whenever you light up a box around the physical font itself, and we've also lit up around this little scene in the bottom left corner, what you're ultimately, what ultimately is going to happen here is again it's going to hog out all the material around the font and around this highlighted circle to render you a 2.5 dimensional image. Now when we're done we will go back in we'll do a bit change and we'll end up hogging out um, hogging out I'm sorry we'll end up clearing out the remainder with a 60 degree V bit. We'll show you this run out afterwards. Uh, the other thing that we've opted to do is this is going to be probably either 5 16 or 3 8 it'll be either uh, 312 or 375 thousandths that these letters are going to stick up off the uh, the fascia of this sign now what we're going to do here is I am going to pocket this out as well because I want to be able to highlight this border much as you saw in the beginning there was a yellow a painted yellow rim around this and this rim coincidentally is I believe it's a half inch. So we're going to pocket out the center of this with a pocketing tool path with that same half inch bit before we do our tool change over to our 60 degree V bit. We're going to pocket this out and I'm only going to go down probably 75 to 125 thousandths. If I go down the full 3 eighths I think it's going to really look out of place but because I want to get a nice nice yellow paint job around this border we'll go down no more than an eighth of an inch. Okay, now let's close this. Our next function is going to be our covered bridge. Now, because, and we'll hypothetically say up here in the corner that we have pocketed this out an eighth of an inch, we're going to do our start depth at 125 thousandths, period. That way, there, if you were to uh, leave that at zero uh, as far as your start depth, it's going to mill and there's going to be nothing done because you're already 125 thousandths. You've touched top over here to actually acclimate your z-axis zero start point. So what you're going to have in the engraving is dead space. You're only going down 40 thousandths. You're still going to have 85 thousandths of free, free area underneath. So we need to start our flat depth out at 125 and then run our, run our engraving. Same thing will apply for the scene itself the little mountain scene. Now, we're, we're winding down here because we are coming up on, on close to 30 minutes in the video, okay? What we're going to do, and this is the last thing you need to make sure of, there's going to be a border here. You're going to have uh, a jump of 375 thousandths off this side. You're going to have 125 thousandths pocket depth on this side. We're going to end up milling this out. I am going to use a quarter inch, 60 degree, three fluted v-bit. I need to make sure that my space from the edge, the furthest most edges of my uh, scene to this inner wall, I need to make sure that they are not going to be under 250 thousandths. Because if they are, when your bit goes in there, I'm 220. All right. What I will need to do is I will need to come in and I will need to make the adjustments on some of these. And I can do it through node editing. 
I can shrink this down just a titch if I want. I can move some of these around, but nonetheless, you want to keep the clearance when your bit goes through. If not, it's going to rub this beautiful wall that's your border for this entire scene. So make sure you take that into account as well, either side. Now, if you've got plenty of room and you want to extend this, you can certainly go in on your mountain scene, you can note at it, and you can pull these down just a little bit more, okay? But again, do not bring them in so that you don't at least have your quarter inch of clearance. Let's bring up the toolpath function of all of this. We're not going to be milling out the measurements. They're strictly in there for reference. Now let's reset this and one at a time we'll do our border. Our border goes in. Now we highlight everything in black. Uh, the scene in this in the bottom left corner will probably most certainly be airbrushed. We'll go in and we'll also preview this visible toolpath. This is that half inch bit that's going in to hog everything out. By making sure that we have the correct clearance on the sides, which we'll see more here in just a moment, it's going to mean that much less work for clean out when it comes down to involving uh, the V bit. As you can see, the half inch has done a wonderful job of clean up. Now we will come in at this point, uh, I'll end up running this pocket is we will preview this visible toolpath. We're going to have this border will now be painted yellow along with all the lettering now. And although I don't have all of this stuff in order as far as my toolpath list, once you've basically hogged out with your half inch end mill, before you jump over to uh, a bit change with your 60 degree V bit to clean up all the excess around the Groveton community welcomes you, town of Northumberland Incorporated. We're going to go in and this is why we, uh, we did this pocket uh, immediately afterwards. Then I will take my, uh, my half inch bit, I'll swap it out uh, to that three fluted V bit that I'm going to need to, uh, to go back and do the cleanup as well as the scene and as well as the uh, the covered bridge but we don't uh, like I said we don't you don't want to jump from uh, bit change to bit change to bit change uh, in actuality I would take this pocket and I would move it right up directly underneath the V carve sign pocket so we would just go from here to here that's it then we do our bit change over to our V bit we'll pop in the covered bridge real quick and then we'll do the scene which is the little mountain background that we got from openclipart.org and this would be the 60 degree V bit going in and doing all the cleanup for us Okay, this is basically everything. Now, as far as the next weekend's tutorial, we're going to get into the milling and fabrication end of this. Uh, again, as you can see, I am really cutting it close. These are the four corners in which I have to screw down to my spoiler board table because I am literally cutting this so close that by the time I do the offsets for the bevel, there is not going to be a whole lot of material left here. So we may have to go through the underside of the table with a couple of screws and screw up into the underside of this so that when this thing goes to do a cutout, I don't have to worry about anything slipping and pulling because it would be a pretty, pretty bad crying shame that this thing pulled on the cutout after milling half a day, okay? Well, I hope this helped. As always, I hope the information that I give you, ladies and gentlemen, is helpful. 
we will uh, we will commence this week with getting the stills. We'll end up getting the uh, the video together, and we'll we'll see you next weekend. Again, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, so much for your support. We appreciate all of you to no end, and uh, enjoy the remainder of your day before the horrifying Monday hits tomorrow. Okay. Uh, best wishes to you and yours. Enjoy your Sunday evening with your family, and we'll see you this week for our midweek shout-out.